Thank you. Thanks so much, George. Our last keynote of the day is Don Foster. Don is the open source community is the director of open source community strategy at VMware, and today she will talk about how we can better understand how to grow our contributor base and build a sustainable community around CNCF projects. Please welcome Don Foster. So an alien life form from Star Trek The Next Generation once described humans as ugly bags of mostly water. Now I think they got the ugly part wrong, but we are kind of squishy and not just in the physical sense. We can be unpredictable and irrational, especially when we're stressed out, overworked, burnt out. And the reality is we're not robots or mindless automatons. Humans have feelings and bad days. We have other commitments and personal challenges in our lives that are often completely invisible to other contributors. And they can get in the way of our contributions to open source projects. But you can't have an open source project without having human beings to maintain it. So you need to be able to encourage people to participate in ways that are sustainable over the long term, both for the project and for those people. And it helps to be proactive and ask people to participate in specific ways that match the work that you need to do within your project. Open source project maintainers are also squishy humans with feelings and bad days. Maintaining an open source project is hard work. And maintainer burnout's common in open source projects. Even the really big, successful open source projects, like Kubernetes, struggle with maintainer burnout and growing their contributor community. It can be hard for overworked maintainers to balance the day-to-day -day work required to keep the project running, while also investing in additional activities to increase future community sustainability. This creates a vicious cycle where maintainers don't have time to onboard new contributors. This leads to fewer contributors, which leads back to not having time to onboard new contributors. In the next few slides, I'll talk about things you can do to increase the chances that you'll break out of this vicious cycle. There are things you can do to motivate people to contribute. Having good first issues or help wanted labels are excellent places to start because these help contributors find something that they can work on while they learn more about the project. But good first issues and help wanted labels are passive requests for help. So I encourage maintainers to be proactive and specific about ways that people can help. Asking someone specific to review a PR or answer a question from a user demonstrates that you recognize their expertise and want their help. This is what motivated me to start contributing to Tag Contributor Strategy. Paris Pittman asked me to write a guide for the tag about measuring project health, which is a topic that admittedly I am pretty passionate about. But it made me feel good that she recognized my expertise and wanted my help. Knowing that we're wanted and appreciated makes us gushy humans feel good, which can be a strong motivator to contribute to an open source project. I know that a lot of people like to hate on governance. It's just extra paperwork or busy work that gets in the way of doing the real work on the project. But this is not true of good governance, which is really about setting expectations and getting all of the various humans within your community collaborating together. Ultimately, the focus of open source project governance is on the people, the roles we play, our responsibilities, how we make decisions, and what we should expect from each other as part of participating in the community. 
Having clear rules about how collaboration occurs, how decisions are made, and what types of contributions are in or out of scope helps community members make contributions that are likely to be accepted and embraced within the project. This helps avoid wasting maintainers' time with contributions that just aren't aligned with the project. A healthy project with clear governance makes the humans happy and helps set your project up for future growth and long-term success. The good news is you do not have to start from scratch. We have some good templates with instructions that we've developed for CNCF projects to use. And CNCF projects are always welcome to just drop into a tag contributor strategy meeting or our Slack channel to get some advice. Good documentation is how we scale the things that take up precious time for the already overworked human beings, like answering the same onboarding questions over and over and over. I see so many open source projects with contributing guides that don't actually provide any useful information. At a minimum, a new contributor needs to understand and be able to spin up a development environment where they can do their work. They need to know how to run tests and understand any processes or expectations you have for pull requests and get instructions for any other requirements you might have. If this is all well documented, brand new contributors can get started with a minimal amount of help from the existing maintainers which can save you a lot of time in the long run. When a project doesn't have good onboarding docs, those squishy burnt out maintainers get frustrated by the amount of time they spend on new contributor questions, which can make it hard for new contributors to feel welcome and become productive. And this is how the humans get discouraged and start to drift away from your project. This does not mean that you need to spend days and weeks writing the perfect onboarding documentation. We have a template and instructions to get you started with your contributor docs. And it's important to remember that anything is better than nothing. And if you start with a few things that will help people get started quickly, those new contributors can actually help make the onboarding documents better by adding more details and additional instructions for things they found confusing or maybe they struggled with. Your project should be designed to keep diversity, equity, and inclusion top of mind. Building a diverse community where all people feel welcome and included does not just happen. It requires being proactive and putting work and thought into it. But this is time well spent, providing an environment where everyone, including people from marginalized populations, feel safe is the first step toward building a diverse community around your project. Projects that make a concerted effort to bring in new people from a variety of backgrounds and then have programs in place to help them grow into leadership positions are more likely to benefit from increased innovation and have a healthier contributor community. By having a diverse and welcoming community, you have the advantage of getting those humans who might not feel welcome in some other projects. Defining the roles and responsibilities for contributors, reviewers, and maintainers can really help with recruiting new humans into these roles. It can help to think about this as a ladder where contributors climb up to become reviewers and those reviewers become maintainers. What's important is to have some documentation so that people understand how they can climb the ladder and gain more responsibilities within the project. And then as you get more humans moving into maintainer roles, you can reduce the workload for the existing maintainers. A contributor ladder usually outlines the different contributor roles within the project, along with the responsibilities and privileges that come with them. Community members generally start at the first levels of the ladder and then advance up it as their involvement in the project grows. And this helps set expectations for the roles and encourages people to think 
about how they might take on increasing responsibility within your project. It also helps existing maintainers be proactive about how to move people into areas of increasing responsibility. The good news is that like with some of the other things I've mentioned, there's a template that you can use to avoid building this from scratch. It probably has more roles than most projects need, so it's usually simplified and customized based on what you need for your project. Now, mentoring takes a little more time, but it's a really good way to help existing contributors become even better, with an eye toward moving them into leadership positions. For busy maintainers, one good approach is to focus on mentoring people who've already been around for a while and are unlikely to disappear to help them learn to do some more complex, time-consuming tasks for the project. Like with many things, mentoring is not something that has to be all or nothing. And you can sort of time box it to whatever amount of time you can fit into your schedule. Even spending an hour a month or an hour a week to help another human more quickly become productive in your project can be time well spent if that person can take on a few tasks to reduce your load as a maintainer. You can even structure this as shadowing to allow them to watch and learn while you do some maintainer tasks that needed to be done anyway. If you focus this effort on helping someone learn to do something that can free up your time later, this would be time well spent. If you're looking for something more formal and structured, the CNCF is also involved in a whole bunch of mentoring programs that can help you onboard some new humans into your CNCF project. Humans like to think of ourselves as irreplaceable, but we are not. We move on to other jobs, we burn out, we retire, and let's face it, humans are mortal and we don't live forever. You should think about what you want to do next and how you can prepare someone else to take over after you decide to move on. We encourage CNCF projects to have an option for people to move to emeritus roles, which recognizes the hard work that those maintainers have put into a project and gives others a point of contact if they have questions about what came before. While also allowing people to sort of step away from those day-to-day -day responsibilities on a project. I encourage you to think of stepping into an emeritus role as a way of handing your duties off to the next generation of maintainers. But for that to work, you need to be proactive about moving new humans into maintainer roles and need to help them acquire the skills they need to successfully take over. The strategic part of all of this comes in thinking about where your time would be best spent. I've given a lot of suggestions so far in the presentation, and you should not try to do everything at once. So I recommend that you think strategically about where you should start. If you know you've had people interested in contributing, but they've given up when they couldn't get started, maybe you should start with onboarding docs. If you have a lot of casual contributors, maybe you focus on the contributor ladder and governance to help move some of those humans up the ladder to take on more responsibility and eventually move into leadership positions. Another way to free up some time for maintainers and break out of that vicious cycle I talked about earlier is by getting help with different types of contributions that take up valuable time and are required to make an open source project successful. Documentation, marketing, community management, and many more. And for projects with complex code bases, it can sometimes be easier to onboard people into these roles first to free up some time to onboard other contributors later. I've mentioned the CNCF Contributor Strategy Technical Advisory Group and linked to our resources, but I wanted to put in a quick recruiting plug. Like with most open source projects, we're also looking for help. The resources and templates I've linked to were all created by the humans behind the tag, and we can use your help to improve them and create new resources for CNCF projects. So if you're passionate about contributor growth, 
governance, building community, and want to help other CNCF projects, we'd love to have you participate. And even if you aren't interested in joining the TAG, any CNCF project can reach out to us to get advice. And we have a kiosk here at KubeCon in the project pavilion if you want to ask questions or just chat with us. To wrap it up, maintaining an open source project is so much work. And there are so many maintainers who are overworked, exhausted, and burning out. And the best way to address this challenge is by finding more humans and growing your contributor base. But it's hard work, and it takes time away from those day-to-day -day activities now, which can be so hard to justify when you feel like you're barely keeping up as it is. In the longer term, spending at least a little time on things that can help you recruit and keep new contributors will be worth it. And you don't have to do everything at once. Spending just a little time is a great way to start. So this is what I'm asking you to do. If you're a maintainer or even just a regular contributor to an open source project, carve out one hour a week to improve your onboarding docs, your contribution guide, project governance, or just spend that time helping another human learn to do something new. I hope these resources give you some ideas for how you can bring a few more squishy humans into your project. And thank you for coming to my talk.